Hello everyone, my name is Rohawk, and in today's video, we're going to be deep diving into the fascinating decision tree algorithm. Predominantly used for classification and regression tasks, the decision tree technique is incredibly helpful in building automated predictive models from scratch and facilitating critical operations research. From a full step-by-step -step tutorial in Python to a complete visualization of the tree-based algorithm, this video will provide you with all of the tools necessary to implement the approach on your own. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Welcome to the programming section of this video, where we'll put our knowledge of decision trees to the test by implementing the algorithm in Python, all from scratch. As always, if you want to follow along with the tutorial, the link to the Kaggle dataset that we'll be exploring together can be found in the description below. Feel free to check it out. With all that aside, let's get started. Now, before jumping into all the details, it's important to first import pandas for data frame manipulation, as well as matplotlib and seaborn for visualization purposes. Perfect. After this, we can read in our cars dataset with the read CSV function and rename all of our columns for increased readability. Additionally, since the attributes of cubic inches and weight don't necessarily correlate to our dependent variable of car brand, we can eliminate them by calling the drop function on our data frame, specifying all of our column names and setting in place to true, which ensures that all of our changes are permanently made. Awesome! Now to view the first five rows of our data set, we can simply call the head method. And here, if we click run, we yield the following data frame. And here we can see all of our independent variables, which consist of MPG, the number of cylinders, HP, time to 60, and year, along with our dependent variable of car brand. We can also check for any null or missing values by calling the isNull function on our data frame and adding an extra method call to sum, which tells us the counts of all missing values for each column in our data set. So here, if we click run, we can see that all of these totals are equal to zero indicating that we have no missing values in any of our columns to worry about. However, before moving on to model building, we need to take care of one issue in particular. So here in the brand column, if you guys notice, our car brand column is categorical and string based, which we want to make numeric. Since machine learning models only work on numeric data, we can assign different labels to each unique value in our class. To do this, we will first import the label encoder class from scikit-learn's pre-processing module. Next, we can create a new encoder object like this. Awesome! Now we can call the fit transform method on our encoder object, which assigns unique labels to all of our class values, and store the result back in our brand column. So if we visualize the first 10 rows of our newly modified data frame, we see that the brand column, instead of holding the name of individual countries, now takes on numeric values instead. Europe is denoted by the number zero, Japan is denoted by the number one, and the United States is denoted by the number two. With that all aside, we can finally begin the process of building our decision tree classifier. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. To start off, we split up our data into X and Y subsets that represent our independent and dependent variables respectively. So here, it's worth noting that for our X data, we temporarily dropped the brand column for our data frame, which ensured that all of our independent variables were kept separate. And for our Y data, we simply assigned a variable to the brand column of our data frame, which, once again, is the variable we're trying to predict. Next, as with most machine learning algorithms, we can call the train test split function, pass in both of our X and Y data sets, and set the size of our testing set to 0.2 which means that we split our data in an 80 to 20 ratio, with the training set holding 80% of the data and the testing set holding 20% of the data. After this, we can create a new model by declaring and instantiating a new decision tree classifier object. So here, as you guys can see, I first imported the decision tree classifier class from scikit-learn's tree module, and then I assigned a new variable called model to a new decision tree classifier object. Next, we can simply fit our model to the X and Y train sets that we generated earlier and thereby complete the training process. Now comes the really fun part, visualizing our entire decision tree with the plot tree function. First, we need to import the plot tree function from scikit-learn's tree module. Then we can set the size of our figure to 100 by 100, 
which ensures that we can comfortably view our entire decision tree. Next, we call the plot tree function with a whole lot of parameters. So let's look at each one by one. We first pass in our model, which is the decision tree classifier that we generated earlier. Next, we set the filled parameter to true, which paints the nodes to indicate the majority class for classification. After that, we specify the values of our feature names, which are the names of our independent variables. So here, as you guys can see, I've simply taken the column values of our X data since that consisted of all of the independent variables we used to train our decision tree classifier. After this, we specify the values of the class names, which are the unique values within our dependent variable of carbon. So here, I've specified Europe, Japan, and the United States, because those three countries are represented in our dependent variable. Next, we specify rounded as true to round any probabilities. Finally, we specify proportion as false to remove any percentages and set precision equal to two, which sets the number of significant figures for each decimal to two. Now, if this still feels unclear, I have the link to the official documentation for the plot tree function located down in the description below, where each parameter is described in further detail. So if you feel like you need a little bit more help understanding this, feel free to check that one out. So after running our code, we get the final decision tree. And here you guys can see there are tons of decision nodes and leaf nodes involved. And so this tree is indeed very complex. So if we look closely at our decision tree, we can actually see what's happening under the hood. So right up here, we have our decision tree, which denotes whether or not our independent variable of year is less than or equal to 1979.5, we have the number of samples that are represented at the decision node, and we have a class value which is set to Europe. Additionally, you guys can see that this tree continues to branch off into separate decision nodes until it reaches these termination points or leaf nodes, which denote the final class value for a given sample. With all that aside, we can store our model's predictions by calling the predict function with our x test set passed in as a parameter. And so here, if we actually print out these predictions, we get the following result and notice that all of these values are label encoded to represent our unique class values of the United States, Japan, and Europe. Next, we can gauge the accuracy measure of our model by calling the score function with our X and Y test sets passed in as parameters. So here after running our code, we can see that our model performed decently well, yielding a final accuracy of around 77%. Finally, we can plot a confusion matrix by calling the plot confusion matrix function to see where our model made the most misclassifications. So here, as you guys can see, I first imported the plot confusion matrix function, and then I called it with our model, our X and Y test sets, and set a color map so that we can easily visualize the results. So after visualizing our confusion matrix, we can view the number of false positives and false negatives for each class label in our data set. And there we have it. Within a matter of just minutes, we've successfully implemented the decision tree classifier in Python, visualized its entire network structure, and analyzed its performance on a sample vehicle dataset. Although this was simply an introductory tutorial, it nonetheless illustrates the intriguing potential of machine learning. The rapid development of robust modeling techniques can easily sift through high dimensional multi-layer data and ultimately has the capacity to drive unprecedented progress and change. Perhaps more importantly, however, these dynamic algorithms can be leveraged to estimate disease breakthroughs, help small business owners optimize their production process, and heighten the efficacy of federal security systems. The possibilities are endless and the applications are nothing short of awe-inspiring. Well, that's been it for me in this video. Take care, have a fantastic day, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.